I tell you this, accountability is annoying. Guys, you gotta understand, when I got to the Marine Corps, I was dealing with some heavy mental health issues. Hey, listen, don't get a job for the sake of just getting a job. Get a job for what it can teach you. Bottom line, what do you want to accomplish? We're in an industry that's number one, most likely to make you a millionaire. When was the last time you started something and you actually finished it. How about like reading a book? You know, there's a saying there that most people buy a book, but they don't get past page 19 of that book. Or how about starting a business and actually following through and making sure the business is profitable, whether it be six months, six years, 10 years, or something as very simple as trying to have the right diet and getting into shape. Now, if you wanna change that, stick with me. Why? Very simple. I wanna help you become a first generation cash flow millionaire. So in this episode, I'm gonna break down how millionaires get things done in three simple hack steps in this episode of the Seven Fear Squad happening in three, two, one. Let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jada. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Apollo here, hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. And in this episode, I'm gonna share with you three simple hacks to finish everything that you start. We have a saying here at the Seven Fear Squad YouTube channel that how you do one thing is how you do everything. But before I get into today's episode, I want you to put it here in the comment section below an affirmation that I am becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire. Drop it in the comment section below if you believe that affirmation. Also, with that being said, I wanna remind you our next milestone for this YouTube channel is to get to 150,000 subs. Why? Because we want to award a church, charity, or nonprofit that we will crowdsource and nominate and give them $5,000 once we cross 150,000 subs. If you haven't done so, and you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please help out and click subscribe to this YouTube channel. So without further ado, let's jump into today's episode. Now, if you were with us last week, we shared an episode of my visit to Nashville, Tennessee, Shelbyville, Tennessee, and we shared the story of our investment, our involvement with Uncle Nearest Whiskey Company. And we're excited that today, it's the fastest growing whiskey company in the history of America. And within that episode, we discussed one thing about why they're having so much success. And that one word, execution. So I'm gonna give you some practical steps today on simply how to get things done. And a quick side note, one of the things that we are known for in our company, with our relationship with our CEO and mentor, Patrick Ben David, the host of Valuetainment, is our ability to implement things that we get coached on, to implement things right away, that involves execution, that we don't think about things, we don't procrastinate on things, we just get things done. And remember, how you do one thing is how you do everything. This involves how you help the people that you love and care about, your family, your church, your charity, how you take care of your dog, the involvement that you have with your kids, your hobbies, your activities, your investments. Again, how you do one thing is how you do everything. So number one, identify the macro, but yet focus in on the micro. Ask yourself, what are you solving for? What's your goal? Bottom line, what do you want to accomplish? As a personal example, when I first started my business in late 1999, early 2000s, I was a single father of three kids. All I wanted to accomplish was simply to pay the bills. And I had a mindset that I chose a career in an industry that was most likely to make me a millionaire, so therefore I can one day become financially free. That that was a life I was signing up for. Now, that was the big picture. Now, what I had to do was a day-to-day. What I had to do was the week to week. What I had to do was a month to month. That's now considered the micro. As tedious and annoying as they were, they still need to get done. That way it would inch me closer and closer to the bigger vision and the bigger goals I had set for myself. Now, some of you might think, well, Matt, you know, you can do this, you can do that. And you're always like this, right? You can always talk on camera. You can always talk in front of people, right? Guys, you gotta understand. When I got to the Marine Corps, I was dealing with some heavy mental health issues PTSD, anger issues, frustration issues, which sometimes still has a residual to today. So I had to work on the thing that I could alleviate right away, which is the financial pressure and strain and chaos that was going on in my life. So therefore, I took on three micro jobs, which would help me with the macro, which is launching my life insurance business. So my three jobs, I was a YMC lifeguard from five to eight o'clock in the morning, so I could read books, I can study for my exams, I can get 
up on my knowledge and up on my technical expertise by studying books and concepts and philosophies in the insurance industry. My second job after I picked up my kids and dropped them off after school was either one or two jobs. It was either a Jiffy Loop hood technician, which by the way, taught me how to sell, taught me how to do presentations. It taught me how to interact with different people, especially when money was on the line and taught me how to interact with people to show them a problem that I had a solution for that caught me customer service, that taught me some basic sales skills. Or my other job, if I wasn't working at G Flu, but I wasn't scheduled that day, I'd be working at Olive Garden. What did Olive Garden teach me? It taught me the day to day how to deal with people, how to deal with stress, how to deal with multiple tables and, and multiple orders all at the same time. And people asking me the same thing all at the same time. It taught me how to manage all that and how to deal with that chaos and still earn sizable tips. See, I want to go about getting jobs, not only to help me pay the bills, but what can that job teach me. And where did I learn that? I learned that from reading books from 5 to 8 o'clock in the morning from Robert Kiyosaki. He said that Rich Dad says, hey, listen, don't get a job for the sake of just getting a job. Get a job for what it can teach you and what it potentially it might give you access to later on down the road. So if you got to this point in the video, I want you to put in the comment section below, I am focusing on what's important. I am focusing on what's important. Number two, keep a scorecard. Bottom line, day to day, especially if you're in business for yourself or you're in sales or learning how to self-manage yourself, you got to keep a scorecard. Make your scorecard easy, easy to understand and easy to read, easy to access, something that reminds you on a very frequent basis of what you need to focus on. Now, today we got technology. Today we got reminders on our phone. Today we have our own software that helps us keep a scorecard of what's happening in our company to keep us on the up and up. But back then, what did I use? A very simple piece of paper that I folded in half, I drew three circles, drew 15 names underneath those circles, so therefore it would be a scorecard because if I create a result, I booked an appointment, I got a client, I put that name in that circle as a result. For example, every year my sister has a nonprofit to raise money for a nonprofit to stop human trafficking. There's a goal, there's a marker, there's online trackers that say, hey, we've reached this goal, we've reached this goal, we need X amount of dollars to hit the next goal, and that is a simple track for us to fund and finance these special operations missions to stop human trafficking. Now, if you're at this point in the video, put it in the comment section below. I am tracking my progress. I am tracking my progress. Put, if you're doing that, or you need to do that, put in the affirmation, I am tracking my progress in the comment section below. Now, the third one, the third hack is accountability. I know, a word that many of you don't like, but it's a word I've come to embrace and love as my business and my career continue to evolve. I tell you this, accountability is annoying, but accountability helps you get results. So forget the annoying part. Just say, hey man, it's helping me get results, so let me embrace accountability. Now, there's three different levels of accountability. Number one, those that avoid accountability altogether. Now, they hate coaching, they hate mentorship, they hate accountability, because they just say, you know what, I'm just gonna do it my way, I'll figure it out, you know, it's my way or the highway. They show up when they want, they do things when they want, and half the time, most of the things they want to get done, never gets done. The second one is they show up, why? Just to say they showed up. Now, they'll take coaching when it's given, but they're not there actively to seek it. You know why? Because coaching increases accountability, and yet, they're not ready to receive it. They're still not ready to change, but they showed up just to show up. Now, the third level, now they go out, they seek coaching, they seek out advice and feedback, even though they may not want to necessarily hear the feedback because it might potentially hurt their ego, their feelings, they might deal with rejection, but nonetheless, their goals are more important than their feelings or their ego. Now, these are the ones that love accountability. These are the ones that eventually become first generation cash flow millionaires. The even better part about that, they too surround themselves with other people that seek out coaching and accountability. And together, Collectively, everybody's standards are raised. And by the way, as a side note, one of the most annoying people to be around is somebody who constantly wants to raise standards. Do you know why? Because that forces everyone, yourself perhaps, to get up off your butt and get to work and forces you to change even when you don't want to. And that's why people that raise standards are so annoying, but yet so loved. So for example, we're in the insurance business, right? We're in an industry that's number one, most likely to make you a millionaire. So guess what we share openly at the end of every month amongst our organization, whether locally or through Zoom? We show 
what everybody earned. Now, this is a 100% commission-based type of industry. We show what everybody earned the last 30 days or last month. And there used to be a time where people are so happy I made $2,000 this month. I'm so happy I made $5,000 this month. We kept doing that month in, month out, raising standards, holding people accountable, making people feel uncomfortable, but raising standards, making feel people more uncomfortable, but raising standards and raising standards and raising standards. And guess what? Today, if you're making $10,000 a month, you're making $100,000 a year, it's very uncomfortable for you. Do you know why? So amongst our group, amongst our agency, making $100,000 a year is kind of like minimum wage. Like we set up GoFundMe pages for you and your family. <laughs> like today, I know a lot of us come from the multicultural minority communities where making $60,000 or $80,000 a year was a lot of money. But we kept holding each other accountable. We kept raising standards. We loved and embraced this game of increasing our standards by embracing the fact that we're always discovering the next best version of ourselves by cracking open next potential, the next, the next. They were constantly seeking evolution that we're constantly seeking continuous growth because one of our values and principles is that either we're growing or we're dying. And now the norm between our top guys is making $250,000 a year. And now the norm is starting to evolve into making $300,000 a year and $400,000 a year and $500,000 a year. Watch, this time next year, watch how many millionaires, by the way, there's not a commercial, but it's just an example of how we're raising our standards. Watch, this time next year, how many more cash flow millionaires we have encouraged and generate and produce as a result of all of us collectively raising our standards. My question to you is forget the fact that we're in the insurance industry. Are you in an environment that raises your standard? Are you in an environment that causes people to say, hey, are you holding yourself accountable to uh, cracking open your next potential? Are you still comfortable? Are you still talking about the best year you've ever had five years ago? Because in our opinion, that's old news. We want to know who's in the game today. Now, if you've made it to this part of the video, please put in the comment section below Another affirmation. I am keeping myself and those around me accountable. I am holding myself and those around me accountable. If you feel that affirmation is gonna be true in your life, put it in the comment section below. You see, I'm a big believer that how you do one thing is how you do everything. You and I are not supposed to be the same person this time next year, or this time five years, or this time 10 years from now. That's why for a lot of people, going to high school reunions is very, very annoying because some people grew and some people didn't. And people say, well, I don't want to meet that person. I want to revisit that person again. They're just going to remind me of the decisions I didn't make. But the reverse can be true. You can be saying to each other, I'm thankful that you made me make better choices for myself, even though I was so annoyed at you, even though I was pissed off at you, but you allowed me to have a better life. See, the journey to self-improvement isn't you just take a switch and turning it on and off all the time. It's what we call start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. And when you do start, stop, start, stop, you never let momentum continue to generate and compound your efforts and income in the future. You're always restarting from square one. You're always restarting from square one if you flip these switches on and off or you have what we call a start, stop, start, stop along the way. If you want to be a great operator, if you want to be known for great execution, things just don't operate that way. See, the truth is becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire is just not a one time thing. It's an all the time thing. And that, my friends, is how millionaires get things done. Before I wrap up, check out these couple of videos here. This first video here is how to master the process if you want to become a millionaire. It's a process of not getting bitter, but getting better. And the other video here is one daily habit that every millionaire master. Again, I want to remind you, our next goal is to hit 150,000 subs so we can award a church, charity, and nonprofit that you and I crowdsource and nominate to have them earn $5,000 from our YouTube channel to them. By the way, have you picked up your merch yet? We got t-shirts, hats, socks. We got backpacks. Go to sevenfearsquad.com and get your merch. So if you're watching this on Facebook and you haven't followed our business page yet, Money Smart Guy, make sure you click like and follow our business page. And if you're watching this on YouTube and you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. That being said, guys, I'm your Money Smart Guy from Dallas, Texas. And until we meet again, continue smart, continue smart, and be money smart today.